Thank you, Hill. <laughs> that was um, interesting. Now you've heard from your SBA president. Normally at this point, we would conclude your introduction to the University of Virginia with a speech by Judge John Charles Thomas. <laughs> he is a wonderful, frankly, a majestic speaker. And we are sorely disappointed not to have him here for you, the most impressive class of one else in the history of the school. <laughs> we just hope that our replacement, Albemarle County Little League baseball coach, Kyle Trutchens, will be able to provide the same level of locution. And so without further ado, and again, Dean Ryan, it's your ass if this guy sucks. <laughs> I present to you, Mr. Hot Crutchins. <laughs> All right, everybody, take a knee. <laughs> or just sit there. All right. See how this is going to be? None of y'all think you got anything to learn from an old ball coach. After all, why would you? You're the most impressive class ever admitted to this school. Everybody tells you that. You're sitting out there with your trapper keepers and your stellar grades from your outstanding colleges and your excellent Lasets scores. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you about another more important score. That's one to nothing. That's the score between you and life. See, now, you're either up 101 life, or it's up 101 you. It's a binary situation. Woo! That's a pretty big word for an old ball coach. Surprise? Well, I ain't always been coaching a mediocre little league team. Guess what I was doing when I was your age? I was a law student, just like you. And not at some half-assed, barely accredited school like Michigan. No. I was a law student right here at UVA. Now, sure, back then we didn't have wireless cards or open book exams or all that many minorities, so things have improved quite a bit. But I'm willing to bet that I had an experience pretty similar to what a bunch of y'all are about to go through. Nobody flushed the urinals back then either. As a side note, that's gross. Flush the damn urinals, boys. Now, I came here like a lot of y'all probably did all fired up to get me a prestigious job. I worked pretty hard. I did pretty darn good. I took a job with a firm who shall remain nameless and Connolly. I took a position in their international corporate environmental bankruptcy transactional litigation team. And I thought I was some pretty hot toast. I was making money faster than Columbia can steal our professors. And I thought I was up 101 life. But y'all ever hear the cliche, pride cometh before the fall? Well, now, originally I thought that that meant the season of fall and like a herd of lions. In retrospect, that's an incredibly stupid reading of that cliche. But let me tell you, that cliche is true. Before I knew it, I was up to my eyeballs in work and I started to freak out. I developed a cocaine habit and I have four wives in three different countries. I started killing endangered condors just for the thrill of it. I had a goddamn perm for six months! <laughs> and then I crashed. All right, now a lot of y'all are gonna be depressed at times over the next three years. Maybe your grades won't be quite as good as you hoped they would. Maybe, maybe your boyfriend or your girlfriend will break up with you. Maybe you'll get picked last for kickball. At which point, you gotta ask yourself, why are you playing fucking kickball? <laughs> But let me tell you, you do not know what depression is until you are sitting alone in the basement of a synagogue, dressed up like Grimace, and drinking Cheerios and tequila out of a boot. You know you're out of control when the only copy of your last will and testament is tattooed on a stripper's back. That was me, not 10 years out of law school. I had hit rock bottom. 
I had spent $20,000 sending my dog to a psychiatrist before I realized that I was the one that needed professional help. Life had gotten up 1-0 on me. But just before I hit utter despair, guess who I ran into? The pump? You shut your mouth, Smokey Peterson. You too. Where, where would I run into the Pope? We don't run in similar circles at all. No. I ran into Shayna, an old friend of mine from UVA Law. And we, she was uh, up in D.C. Uh, working with a job with the Washington Redskins, but was thinking about moving back down to Charlottesville to take a job with a high school. And we talked and talked. We talked about life at school and life after school. She told me something I'll never forget. She said, Hut, you don't go to law school to learn black letter law. You don't even go to learn how to be a good lawyer. Instead, you go to law school to learn how to think better. And by doing so, you learn how to better think about yourself. And I remember I looked at her in the eye and I said, you're goddamn right, Shana. You're goddamn right. And I knew I could get things back together. But now that night, she and I decided to drive back down to Charlottesville to walk around the old campus. At midnight, we split a six-pack on Copley Field and listened to Journey's Greatest Hits. <laughs> she said, she said, Hut, don't stop believing. And I asked her to marry me. We moved down here together and I started a new life. Now, we ended up getting divorced because she's a frigid bitch, but that's <laughs> Anyway, I mean, heck, I got a bus full of fat kids sitting in the parking lot waiting for me to drive them to Crozet for a non-competitive game. <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I hope y'all actually listen up to an old ball coach. Maybe not make some of the same mistakes he made. I don't treat these three years as a stepping stone to something bigger. Instead, treat them as an opportunity to develop yourself, and not just as a lawyer, but as a person. See, y'all all came here with different talents. I mean, maybe you design your own jewelry. Maybe you teach ballroom dancing. Maybe you always get picked first, first for kickball. Again, guys, what's up with the kickball? Maybe you write poetry. I don't know. But don't let those other talents and interests disappear. Everybody here is a law student. It's the other things that make you special. And it's those other things that make you into you. And I just remember that. And you'll never be a number. Not here, not any place you go after here. Now y'all are lucky. I mean, you got three great years ahead of you, full of uh, nature hikes and oral arguments, <laughs> Gus burgers. <laughs> Charlottesville's a great place. No place in the world I'd rather be serving 3,000 hours of community service. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. You have a good